they had a conception in Mesopotamia of fate and destiny mm -hmm. and the extent to which your life was prescribed and the extent to which you were independent and this and they talk things like this in school, they discuss philosophical matters and they use this game board obviously partly to talk about the influence of the fate and presumably about scores and numbers and what difference it makes if you so it wasn't just something they did at lunch, but it was a focus for exposition. It's a very, very remarkable thing. Mm. Hi guys, it's my D20, and we're going to talk about the Royal Game of Ur. This game was chess for chess, backgammon for backgammon. It was the popular game to rule them all. The Royal Game of Ur. It's dates back at least 5,000 years and we found examples of it in Europe, in ancient Egypt, in the car moon had one, and in ancient Mesopotamia. And we're seeing some things from ancient Mesopotamia now uh, that I went to look at in the British Museum. Here are some cuneiform tablets and it was from a tablet like that that the rules for the Royal Game of Earth were first deciphered. There is my wife. She's not from ancient Mesopotamia, but she is on Instagram, Milk and Moon UK. If you want to follow her, she's amazing. And here is the board game itself. Now, I asked the curator, Dr. Irving Finkel, about the significance of these tiles, because it's only the rosette that is um, functional in gameplay. Were all boards like this? The answer is no. The design varies wildly. And here we are behind the scenes where people are reading Cuneiform and trying to decipher it. But I found all these other rosettes in the exhibition of things from ancient Mesopotamia. It turns out that particular symbol is a potent symbol within the culture, um, a symbol of divine abundance and uh, providence. And so it was something used in religious contexts, uh, in decoration, and also in this game, which I found really fascinating. Now we have the rules for this game because an astronomer wrote them down and that's really fascinating to me. He'd seen these, um, well there was this connection between the zodiac and the 12 uh, tiles at the middle of the board and um, astronomy, that they, this link had been made. It's really interesting that this deeper meaning was being read into the game. Uh, the last interesting thing that I've discovered was just examples of the board game from all over the world which you are seeing at the moment then once i've done all that research i had to go and make it when it came time to build my own copy of the royal game of air i decided to use bamboo note trays as a basis i've used these many times before in crafts for things like dice towers and so it's a material that i knew and i thought i could do something good with here i am using a sharpie to design the tiles for the top of the board but the ink ran when i tried to put a spray varnish over it so that was a bad idea I had to sand the whole thing back and start again. I decided this time to grab my soldering iron and burn in the design, which was a much better idea actually and has a lovely finish to it. My design for the tiles on the board is based heavily on the famous board of the Royal Game of Ur, which is in the British Museum, but I adapted the designs slightly so it would kind of suit my style a bit better and because I learned from Dr. Irving Finkel that there is a great variety in the designs of the board and so I really have license to make the design any which way I like and that would still be authentic to the history of the game. So my version of the game is a travel edition. You can see that there are two boxes and one slides into the other so that it's nice and compact and then the dice which are tetrahedrons and the game pieces can be kept inside so i decided to line them with felt that you saw there and then i went to the beach 
not only to look at seagulls, but also to look for game pieces. I could just grab some stones from the beach, find some orange ones, find some black ones, seven pieces for each team. Any excuse to go to this beautiful beach, to be honest. And then once I had the pieces, I had to make the dice. And the dice are tetrahedrons. There are four used in gameplay with two sides, two corners colored in on each dice. And here is the finished board. I'm really pleased with how it came out. This was a really fun build to make and a fascinating game to discover and learn about. If you would like to know more about the Royal Game of Ur, I encourage you to uh, check out the videos that have been released about it from the British Museum here on YouTube. I'll put links to both of those videos down in the description. And uh, who knows, maybe there'll be more Royal Game of uh, content in the future because I am not done with this game. Perhaps make an eventual artwork out of it. So watch this space. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.